is accurately measuring the energy change from a combustion reaction has its challenges. When you measured the cheese puff, uh, you may have gotten data like this. Not exactly the same, but like this. So, for example, this person measured a cheese puff and 0 0.90 grams of the puff burned. The temperature change of the water went up 14.5 degrees Celsius, and the volume of the water was 30 degrees, I mean 30 milliliters. Now, in order to determine the amount of heat that the cheese puff gave off in calories, we do it from what point of view? The water. The water. So our Q equation is that the mass of the water times the change in temperature times the specific heat capacity. Okay. I'm going to ask that you do not discuss this at this time and just listen. So to plug in our values for this, the mass that burned, is that the mass we put in here? No. The mass is the mass of the what? Water. The water. Now, we have the volume of the water, 30 milliliters. So what we need to do is use that the density of water is one gram per milliliter. How many grams would 30 milliliters be? 30. 30 grams. So 30 grams of water. The change in temperature in this case was 14.5 degrees Celsius. And the specific heat capacity of water is one. <coughs> That's why water is so helpful in these calculations. We multiply the 30 times the 14.5 on our calculator times 1, and this equals a value of 435 calories. That's the amount of heat that this particular Cheeto gave off. Now, if we had a bigger Cheeto with more mass, could it give off more heat? Yeah. Probably. Some of you had 9, 10, 20 Cheetos. Your bonfire causes the water to boil. The problem with that was you could not measure the temperature change when it reaches its boiling point because all the heat is going into vaporizing the liquid. So all of the heat is going in as the heat of vaporization to vaporize that liquid and the temperature is never going to change no matter how big of a fire you get until all the water is a gas. So because of that you may have had a source of error in that department, that's okay. Now, 435 calories depends on the amount of Cheeto you're using. So what we need to do is make it into a term that is relationally for different Cheetos. If you said you did, you burned four Cheetos, do four Cheetos weigh the same as three Cheetos? They could. So the mass is more important than the number of Cheetos. So we're going to use what's called the calorie per gram ratio. To do this, we take the number of calories, 435 calories, and we divide by the mass that burned. In this case, 0 0.90 grams burned. So 435 divided by 0.9 gives us a value of 483 calories per gram. So this means if you had one gram of Cheeto exactly that burns, the whole thing burns, you get 483 calories. Any questions? Clarifications on where I got any of these numbers from? Anything on this? Um, yes. Is determining how much mass burned, is that necessary? Uh, yes. You have to determine the mass burned because that will give you the calories per gram. So if you don't know how much burned, you won't be able to figure out the calorie per gram because not all of the Cheeto burns necessarily. So if you have the initial mass of the Cheeto, you burn the Cheeto, there's something left over. Yes, sir? Which one? Uh, this will be on YouTube. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you do the same thing for the toasted corn snack, okay, if you have 0.34 grams for toasted corn snack, temperature change is 12, volume of water is still 30. 30 times 12 equals 360. 30 times 12 times 1 equals 360. That's the number of calories. How do we get the calories per gram? What do we divide 360 by? 0.34. And that's that 1,059 calories per gram. Okay, so it's the same calculation, just shown on for toasted corn snack data. Now, if we look at the data, which one gives off more energy, a cheese puff or a toasted corn snack? Based on this data, 483 or 1059? 
1059 per gram. Per individual piece, it might be different. So per gram can relate them to one another. So you want to use the calories per gram to compare them. So this is why a cheese puff, in this case, gives off less energy than a toasted corn snack. Now, how could we see how good our calculations were? If you look on a bag of Cheetos, it tells us the number of calories per serving. So if we grab a bag of Cheetos and look at the number of calories per serving, yellow let me see so for the Cheeto on the bag here it says that there are uh, 28 grams in a serving and it also says there's 160 calories so to get the calories per gram we take 160 divided by 28 what does that equal on your calculator what does that equal 5.71 5.71 calories per gram for Cheetos for corn nuts the value is we've got 28 grams again and the amount of calories based on the package is for 28 gram it's 130 calories so we take 130 divided by 28 4.6 Now, if we look at our data, how does this compare to what we just calculated? Way off. The cheese puff was 483 calories per gram. And then the other one was 1,059 calories per gram. What the heck is going on? We're not only off, but we have ours backwards as well. Yeah, we got it backwards. They say that more heat is given off by a Cheeto than by a corn nut. Now, do you think the people that wrote this on the bag have a clue how to measure this? Yes. Probably a little bit better than us. Do you think they used an aluminum can to measure this data? No. Probably not. They probably had a device that was much more advanced called a bomb calorimeter. Where you literally put the food in and explode the food and measure the energy that's given off. <laughs> it's a really cool device and it has layers of water and insulation and at each layer they measure how the temperature changes now even if you have a great calorimeter your results are still going to be off the reason why is these these two Abbreviations are a little bit different. What do you notice is difference between cow and cow? Big C over here. When you look on a package of food, it has a big C for calories. When you measure the calorie in chemistry, it's a little c. That's because 1,000 calories as defined by scientists a calorie is the amount of energy to raise the temperature of water one one gram of water one degree celsius that is equal to one food calorie and one food calorie is also called a kilo calorie because there's a thousand regular calories in a kilo calorie it also could be written just like this with a capital c because because we live in America, we don't put kilo in front of it because we're an American, so we put a capital C instead of putting kilo calories, which would make it a lot easier. Okay. Now, the cool thing about this is it is not that the serving of chips only has 5.71 calories per gram. It actually has 5,710 calories per gram. Okay, 28 grams of Cheetos would heat up a lot of water, for example. Okay, one Cheeto heats up some water. Okay, bonfire group in the back. Lots of Cheetos, 
lots of water boiling, right? Not good or not good. Depends on what you're looking for. So the cool thing is food calories are measured by the exact same procedure we did with a little bit better equipment. Now, when we do chemistry calculations, let's say we took out a candy bar with chocolate on it. Mm. And the candy bar is 300 calories. What do you think this means? Bad for you. It tastes great. I don't know why it's bad for you, but it's bad for you. Okay, whatever. It has 300,000 calories of energy. Is it a small one or a big one? All right. So, we'll have to clean that up after class. So, is the candy bar a good source of energy? Candy bar a good source of energy? Yeah, pull it out, but that's Yeah, it's good energy. It's got a lot of energy in it in a small package. Okay? Whether it's good for you or not might be a whole other issue, right? So there's benefits and there's drawbacks to anything you put in your body. For example, Cheetos or corn nuts. Which one would you rather eat? Cheetos. Some people like Cheetos. Some people like corn nuts. Depends on your taste value. Which one would you eat if you're on a camping trip? Or would you eat something else? Those are all debates. If you need to start a fire, could you use Cheetos? Yeah. Could you use corn nuts? No. Not as good. So there's benefits and drawbacks to each fuel. So when we look at fuels, You guys designed some sort of experiment. Many of you held your can or your beaker over the fire. Okay? If you attached it with paper clips, it could have made your life easier. You could have controlled it. As you burned your food, was all of the heat transferred to the water? No. No. Not all of it was transferred to the water. Some of it went where? Into the air. Some of it went into the can. If you used a beaker, some of it went into the beaker. So, energy is always conserved due to the first law of thermodynamics. That means the energy has to go somewhere. Did it all go into the water? No. So our result was not as precise as what they have on here. Okay. And based on your setup, there could be ways of, ways of improving it. How could you improve the setup is one of the questions we're going to talk about or think about. So. There are two main sources of experimental error with this experiment. Okay, first of all, not all the heat's transferred. Okay? Second of all, you have some of the heat transferred, but it goes to different locations. And also, the water, when the water heats up, the water loses some heat as well, as it's heating up. Okay? Not as quickly, but it still can happen. Typical experiment results indicate that toasted corn snacks contain more energy per gram than cheese puffs. Why would that be? Did the cheese puff or the corn snack burn faster? Cheese puff. Cheese puff. Cheese puff burn faster, and it also releases more energy in all directions. The corn snack often burns slower. Because of that slow burn, it's actually more efficient at transferring the energy. You just have it closer usually to the thing, and you can it burns slower. Because of that quick flame, some of you didn't even get your water on until it was almost burnt out. Right? You're like, oh, it's burning. Yeah, get that out of there. Okay. All that heat was not transferred to the water. So these are typical sources of air that you may have done. 